Hey you guys, in this video I'm going to talk about linear searching and what is linear searching? In a nutshell, linear searching is as simple as taking an array or a vector more specifically and iterating from the beginning to the end searching for one particular element. And here we're going to go about two ways of implementing this linear search. So let's take a look at our main. So here I have my main program. I have a vector of floats called f, and these are seemingly random values, as well as a vector of strings called s with seemingly random strings. And the assumption with linear search is that we don't know what's in the vectors. However, here you see the values. But the idea is, is that any given vector, and we need to look for it, when we have linear search, we start, we assume nothing. We don't know if it's sorted or if it's random. We don't assume any of that. We just assume it's unknown. We start from the beginning, go to the end, and we search for our values. So because I'm going to be searching, all I'm going to be using is the double equals operator. So I think this is a good opportunity to practice some more generic programming. So I'll begin my algorithm but with a template. And I'm going to have type name. I'm going to say T. And for this, for the first implementation of linear search, we're going to return a bool. So what is this linear search going to do? Well, this linear search is just going to determine the truthness if we have a value inside of our vector. What that means is that here I have my vector F. If I put my linear search and I have my vector F as one input, which I'll have here. And actually, I can make this a const because I'm not going to be editing the contents of E. Um, and I have my value here. So when I call linear search, I'm going to provide a vector and a value that I'm looking for. So if I call linear search with F and the value 4.0 is going to return true because the value 4.0 is in the vector F. However, if I do a function call of linear search with providing f as the first argument, and let's say 4.1 as the second argument for the function, it's going to return false because 4.1 is not in the vector f. So how do I go about conducting my linear search? Well, one way that I'd like to show is through the use of a ranged for loop. So I'll have for const auto, we'll say x, in v and I'm simply going to check if x is equal to value then we return true and then I end my for loop after that I'm going to return false so one question you may have is that well why don't I have an if else statement like this where I have else return false this kind of makes more sense doesn't it well, I'd agree with you, but there's a problem with adding this else statement, and that's we're only checking value is equal to the first element of our vector v. Why is that? So this ranged for loop, this allows us to traverse the entire vector starting from the beginning and ending, well, at the end. And with this simple check, checking that well, while each we're going to be checking each element of x if it's equal to value. So if it is and it's true, we're good, we just return true. However, if we have this else statement, when we check the first element of the vector, if it's not equal to value, we're going to return false right away. So we don't have the opportunity of checking the entire vector. We're only able to check the first element. And that's where the problem arises. So here, I delete this and I have it return false because the only case when I can return false is that if I've checked every single element of the vector, and if it doesn't trigger the if statement, well, it simply means that the value is not in the vector. So I return false. Another way that we can think of doing our linear search is rather returning whether or not it's true that the value is there, we're going to return the index in which the value is found and if it's and we need to also consider the possibility that it's not found so here in linear search on line 9 this is what we do if the value is found and on line 12 this is what we do if the value is not found we need to consider both cases so for linear search index I'm going to have well essentially the same argument 
which is actually pretty neat. And we'll have our X value. But here, since I'm dealing with indices, I actually don't want to use a ranged for loop because a ranged for loop only gives me the values. In this ranged for loop on line A, X is each value of our vector v. But since I'm dealing with indices here, I need to start from the beginning of my vector and access it through an index and go up until the end of the vector. So I'll set up my for loop to start out that way. Since all our vectors start at zero, I'll have my iterator start at zero. And while it's not equal to v.size, we're going to keep imp incrementing it. So this for loop is essentially going to iterate through vector just as the ranged for loop on line seven. But rather than embedding the accessing of the value inside of the for loop, I'm going to manually access the value here. And this is what I mean by that. X is already to equal to V of I, but that's built into the ranged for loop. Here I'm manually accessing V of I. So if V of I is equal to value, then we're good because we have a match. So we're going to return I. So what am I going to do if I don't find my value? Well, I like to return negative one just because for indices and accessing vectors, we always start at zero and we end at some positive number. I can't have a vector that's negative too long. So for me, it's safe to say that when I'm searching for an index in an array, if I get a result of negative one or really any negative value, that it's not in the array. So following that, I'm going to return negative one if I can't find my value that I'm looking for inside my vector V, and this is going to be analogous with returning false. Otherwise, if I find my value inside of V, I'm going to return the index of where it's found, analogous to returning true for a linear search on line six. And of course, there are other ways too. I'll actually throw in another implementation. Sometimes you might see the use of accessing the vector through pointers. So you'll have something like this. And here we have it. So we have linear search pointer and it begins with a for loop that instead of having either I being an index or the value of each element in our vector, what we have here is that I is a pointer to the beginning of the vector and it goes until the end. But I is a pointer here. And in order for me to access the value of I, I need to dereference it. So I need to do that here. So wherever I is pointed to, I dereference that value and I compare it with, well, our search item, the value that we're looking for. And similar to our linear search in line six, if we have a successful match, we return true. However, if we iterate through the entire vector and we don't trigger this, well, that means that our value is not inside of V, so we return false. So why don't I go about writing some tests in main? So here I have my search values, f search one, which is 9.0, f search two, which is 4.0, and then we have our two string search, s search one, which is Borderlands, and s search two, which is Nyarlathotep. So here I'm gonna do my function calls and search for the all my four queries here inside of the vectors that I have. And here we have our tests. So we begin with our linear search that returns a Boolean. So I have my linear search with the vector f with my f search one, and then I do the same thing, but instead of using f search one as my searching value, I'm gonna use f search two. And I essentially reflect the same thing with uh, the string values. I have s with s search one and s with s search two. So what I predict is that f with f search one, this should return false because 9.0 is not inside of our vector f. And for the second linear search with f search two, this should return true or one because 4.0 is inside of the vector f and with our vector s our first function call with linear search with s search one should return true because board the string borderlands is inside of our vector s however on line 47 with s search two we will return false because nyarlathotep is not inside of our string s next we proceed with our linear search index so because f search one is not inside of f, it's going to return a negative one. However, f search two is inside of f, so it will return 
index 4. Well, just the number 4. Similarly, s, search 1, is inside of s, so it's going to return 0. However, s search 2 is not inside of s, so it will return negative 1. These are the expected outputs. Why don't I run the code and let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, I forgot semicolons here. So now that we have that, we'll run it. This is excellent. This is exactly as I predicted, and I love it. So one last thing that I want to talk about is the complexity of the algorithm. So what is complexity? Well, considering the best case scenario, well, actually our example is going to be on line 54 and 47 with using S and S search 2. Why is this the best case scenario? Well, S search 2 is the string borderlands, which is the very first element of our vector S. So in terms of iterating through the array, we only have uh, one access to our vector S, which is just the first element. This is considered the best case scenario because we find our string right away. So if we have our best case scenario, what's the worst case scenario? Well, our worst case scenario is actually going to be on line 43, 44, and 46. All the other searches. Why is that? While f search 2 is in our vector, it is actually at the end of it. So we need to access this element, then this element, then this element, then this element, finally until we get to the last element. So for our last comparison, we had four earlier comparisons before it, before finally reaching our value here. And while this is the better of the three, our search with f search one and s search two, they are even worse because we iterate through the entire array and we don't find it which is quite painful because we just did five iterations for F and four iterations for S. And while that doesn't seem like much, imagine running a database and you got to search through there. How big can your database be? I don't know. You can have like millions of values. And could you imagine searching through your array with millions of values? That will take a long time. So ideally, you want to have the best case scenario. Well, for software engineering, we focus on analyzing the worst case scenario because we're always expecting the worst. So linear search has something called a linear running time. So what does this mean? So the worst case scenario is that we need to search every single value of the array. So we assume that that's how many times it takes to run this algorithm. So if I have an array of five values, the worst case scenario is going to be five. If I have an array of 10 values, the worst case scenario is going to be 10. And if I have a vector of length 50, the worst case scenario is 50. If I have a length vector of 100, the worst case scenario is 100. And I hope you're starting to see a pattern here that the length is matching the worst case scenario. And this is a linear relationship. So linear search has a linear running time. That wraps it up for this video. In the next one, I'm going to cover a better, faster algorithm. However, it works as an assumption that the vector is sorted either lowest to highest or highest to lowest. But after we sort it, our searching time gets much faster. So I'll see you there.